Thanks to the release of Resident Evil Village last year, 2021 was, for the majority of people who met Lady D at least, the year of wanting to be stepped on. But with the potential release of the Dead Space remake this year, will 2022 then reverse the trend and be the year of people wanting to step on things? Well, if Isaac Clarke's big stompy space boots have their say, I reckon that might just be the case. I'm Eurogamer's Ian Higton, and in this video, I'll be looking at the 13 necromorphs that we just can't wait to stomp on in the Dead Space remake. Word of warning for those not wanting spoilers for the game before I start though, this list contains a refresher on pretty much every basic enemy type from the original 2008 release, plus two previously cut prototypes that could potentially be brought back for the remake. I do steer clear of the bigger enemies and the bosses though, but nevertheless, if you've never played the original and want to go in fresh when the remake releases, it might be best for you to skip this video for now and come back when you need some tips in the future. What was that? Did you hear that? Not sure. What the hell? I don't know, something's in the room with us. First up is the Slasher, which is by far the most common enemy in the original Dead Space, so it's no surprise that it featured prominently in this short teaser trailer for the remake. The Slasher comes in many different forms, thanks to the indiscriminate way that the corpses on Aegis 7 and on board the Ishimura are reanimated into necromorphs by the Marker including horrible spitty ones and enhanced forms of the slashers, which take way more punishment to put down. But no matter what these things look like or what they're wearing, they all have one thing in common. Two large, blade-like protrusions of bone that spout from their hands or shoulder blades. The slashers want nothing more than to embed these pointy things in Isaac's flesh, and they're not fussy about which part of his body that flesh is located in either. Although, I bet they do give great back scratches. The best way to deal with a slasher is to sever a few of its limbs, as decapitating them just kind of pisses them off. Take off both its arms and it'll die instantly, but as they're susceptible to charging at you, it often makes sense to take off a leg first to slow them down. You can take both legs off if you want, of course. It won't always kill them, but it will leave you with a nice low target to stomp on. Nowadays, if you said the word twitches to someone, people would immediately assume that you were talking about some kind of internet-based influencer. But the only thing the Twitchers from Dead Space want to stream is your blood. All over the floor. And walls. And most probably the ceilings too, if they had it their way. Twitchers are basically supercharged, super fast slashers, and they won't be asking you to smash a follow button because they'll be too busy smashing your face in. Their unnatural speed comes from a peculiar effect during the infection process, which sees the bodies of certain soldiers merging with the stasis units that were built into their body armour. Anyone who's familiar with the Dead Space franchise will be well aware of Isaac's stasis unit and its ability to slow down time, but during the transformation of the Twitcher necromorphs, this effect is somehow reversed, allowing the Twitchers to move at unnatural speeds. Obviously, this makes Twitchers a lot harder to hit compared to the normal slashes that Isaac encounters, and blasting them with Isaac's stasis module only slows them down so much. That means attacking from a distance is a must with these speed freaks, so try to hobble them before they get anywhere near you. Don't let your guard down once you've taken one down though, a Twitcher with no legs is still able to move very fast, and both Twitchers and normal slashers are able to play dead. So my advice here would be to keep an eye out for their death animations and then stomp them to bits, just to make doubly sure. <laughs> the 
The Exploder here is nowhere near as fast as the Twitcher, but that doesn't mean it's any less lethal. Its big, blobby arm sure might look like a giant cotton bud covered in earwax, but that bulky yellow blob is even worse than that sounds. It's actually a pustule that's filled with a volatile chemical, which, you guessed it, is prone to exploding when it hits Isaac in the face. Due to the volatile nature of its fist of fury, this is another necro nasty that you'll want to keep as far away from as possible. So if you spot one shambling towards you, take aim at the glowing weak spot and it'll detonate instantly. Not only does this turn the exploder into an X exploder, but the resulting splash damage will almost certainly wipe out any other necromorphs that are standing nearby. If, however, you do want to stomp on these ones too, it is possible to detach the pustule with a careful shot to the arm. Once that pesky limb is out of the way, the exploders are pretty weak and are only able to attack with a headbutt, so you should be able to melee them to death with relative ease. Oh, and you also get the added bonus of being able to use Isaac's Kinesis power to lob the Exploder's discarded bag of boom at other enemies, which is something that not only looks cool, but also does maximum damage to whatever it hits. Childbirth is often described as a miracle, but in the Dead Space universe, it's just another nightmare to contend with. And this specific nightmare has a name. Meet the Pregnant, a heavily mutated slasher that comes complete with a belly full of bundles of joy that just can't wait to meet Isaac's face. Tackling the Pregnant needs to be done with kid gloves though, because if you mess up an encounter with these lumbering beasts, you'll be invited to one of the worst baby showers of all time. Rupturing a pregnant sack is a gamble that you have zero odds of winning, because you never know what kind of necromorph will emerge from its belly. What is certain though is that these newborns will instantly begin protecting their mother. So the best way to deal with a pregnant in dead space is to first take out one or both of its legs to slow it right down before removing the rest of its limbs in order to kill it without disturbing those furious fetuses. Or is it feti? Fetus? It's one of those. Do it this way anyway and afterwards you can stomp around on its big bloaty body to your heart's content. <laughs> So exactly what horrors can those pregnants birth anyway? Well, the most common beastly babby is the swarmer here, and these little creatures love nothing more than to gang up on a target and munch on them until they die. Considering they're composed of nothing more than little bits of reanimated meat and bones, you'd think that would mean that they'd be perfect stomping targets, but it's actually the opposite. As soon as you get close, they'll leap onto Isaac before he even has a chance to lift his leg up for a good old trample. And once five or six of them have latched onto him, the only thing Isaac will be stomping on is the pearly gates to heaven. The chance of a pregnant birthing a single lurker is a much rarer occurrence than it birthing a pack of swarmers, but that's actually good news for Isaac because these reanimated babies are way more of a threat to him. It's actually more common to find them literally hanging out in open areas of the game though, as they love to attach themselves to walls somewhere out of stomping range. From there, they'll use their trio of tentacles to fire barbs at Isaac, which, while unlikely to kill him, are really annoying, because a direct hit can stagger you and leave you open to attack from other necros. Thankfully, by keeping on the move, it's normally pretty easy to avoid the barbs, so keep zigzagging and sever at least two of those tentacles as soon as they appear on their bodies for a nice quick kill. And then, once they finally flop to the floor, you can jog on over and crush them under Isaac's space boot. Go on, spoil yourself, why don't ya? <laughs> This next enemy is legitimately the scariest one in the game for me. I absolutely hate them. 
and most of that hate is due to the horrible freaking noises they make. Oh. Ugh, savage. The thing that makes the divider here unique amongst its fellow necromorphs is that, like a tower of children hidden under a trench coat trying to buy some alcohol from the local spa, this lanky figure is actually formed of five creatures, and those creatures will split apart when the main form is damaged. Sometimes a pregnant will also carry parts of a divider in its belly, but just like in the case of the lurker, this is relatively rare. A fully formed divider will try to use its hook-like claws to divide Isaac's body into smaller, less useful pieces of Isaac. But the real danger comes when it starts to divide, and then Isaac has to deal with five enemies at once. This bodily breakup happens after you've damaged the main form, so as soon as you see it starting to split apart, try to hit it with a stasis blast and this should give you more time to thin out the numbers. And by thinning out the numbers, I obviously mean stop it on them. When it comes to stomping on enemies, the Leaper here is up there as one of the best there is to smoosh with your shoosh. But just because this necromorph spends a lot of its time close to the floor, due to the fact that it swapped its legs for a tail during the reanimation process, doesn't mean that it's not still a huge threat. That mangled scythe hanging out of its ass can whip and stab, and those long teeth aren't there for it to give a pretty smile in wedding photos. Oh no, them's for biting. As its name suggests, the Leaper has a powerful leaping ability that allows it to launch itself great distances, meaning it can get up close and personal pretty quickly and put all of its sharp bits into action. But catch them with a well-timed burst of stasis and you'll be able to dance a bloody jig on their bones with relative ease. This next beast is Dead Space's equivalent of someone who cried about wearing a mask in a shop for five minutes during the really dark time of the pandemic. It even has a name to match, although surprisingly that name isn't selfish baby person who has no sense of community. It's actually called an infector and its main goal in life is to create more necromorphs by giving any corpses it finds a little kiss on the forehead with its proboscis. Except maybe kiss isn't the right word. Stab is probably better. Yeah, whatever. Either way, the infector forcibly inserts its germ tube into a corpse and then it randomly pumps the necromorph contagion into said corpse, quickly turning it into another necromorph. Now, the infectors themselves aren't that easy to stomp on unless you stasis them, but their presence does inspire some lovely fast footfall action because the easiest way to reduce their threat levels is to smash up every corpse in the near vicinity as soon as you see one appear. That means the Leaper will be powerless to create new necromorphs, and you'll be able to blast them away with barely any issues. When you're done with the stomping, that is. You are going to have a real hard time stomping on this next necromorph because it's basically a lump of meat that's been fused to a wall. And also, if you go near it, it'll try to decapitate Isaac with its intestines which is both gross and painful at the same time. Grainful? The Guardians can be dispatched relatively simply by using a weapon to remove all the tentacles that sprout from its chest cavity, but if you do fancy a bit of a stomp, it does also poop out little angry embryos known as pods, which should allow you to experience that lovely crunching noise that you've been missing. Just make sure you shoot off the tentacles that emerge from them first, or they'll explode under your feet like a grenade made out of afterbirth. Oh, yuck. Next up is the Weezer, and no, I'm not talking about that ooey you Buddy Holly band. I'm talking about this saggy bag of gas that's mouth farting poison into the air. In the original Dead Space, the Weezer only appears in one chapter of the game, and aside from draining your oxygen supplies while you're in close proximity to them, 
they're completely defenceless and therefore it makes them a perfect place for you to plant Isaac's boot. But do stay alert for revenge attacks from other necromorphs once you put one of these down, as killing them often triggers a small wave of enemies to spawn. So, as I mentioned in the opening to this video, I've skipped out on talking about the bosses and a couple of the bigger surprise enemies in the game, but what about the necromorphs that Visceral skipped out on back when it was developing the game? According to an interview with IGN, there is a possibility that the Dead Space remake could restore cut content from the original game. Perhaps that will be in the form of some extra missions or some extended levels that were shortened in the original due to technical restraints. Or maybe it will be to bring back some of the cut necromorphs, like the commander here, which was originally intended to be a mini-boss in the game. I wouldn't put much money on this one making an appearance in the remake though, mainly due to the fact that it didn't make it past the concept art stage. But judging by these two images, it would have been absolutely terrifying to fight and well worth a stomp or two on its skull once you'd helped Isaac finish it off. Hazardous anomaly detected. Quarantine activated. If anything, the most likely cut necromorph to make a return would be the Swinger here, whose concept art is way more in keeping with the look and feel of the monsters that actually made it into the game. The Swinger was cut due to time and budget constraints, and it's a shame that it had to go because it had a rather neat yet nasty trick up its fleshy sleeve. The Swinger was actually made up of two creatures, attached together at the chest, which could use two tentacle arms to swing from the ceiling. Once those tentacles were dismembered and the beasts dropped to the ground, the plan was for the duo to come apart and then split up and flank the player on the ground. You shoot one, you stomp on two for free. I say you shoot one, you stomp on two for free. But if that wasn't enough horror to contend with, the Swinger also stored a corrosive liquid in its chest, which it could vomit out at Isaac for a ranged attack. And actually, you know what? As cool as it looks, maybe I don't want to come up against one or more of these things after all. That sounds nasty. <laughs> And that's your lot, folks. If you're as excited as we are for the Dead Space remake, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel for daily videos about video games, and hold on to your stomping boots because as soon as we hear more about it, we'll be letting you know right here on Eurogamer. Goodbye and good stomping, space friends. Oh.